Sound check. We're good. Are we on? Everyone's on? Are you there, everybody? How you doing? Rick Larson here uh, for my fourth Facebook Live um, on COVID-19. Uh, I got some notes here I'm going to go over, but just want to let you know we're using these online tools in the campaign during this time to share information to everybody about, uh, you know, what the heck's going on. Our focus, uh, my focus has been on COVID-19. So what I want to do is give you an update on what's happened since the last time I talked to you and then answer some questions that we got in. And I'll try to be, uh, be expeditious here. But, you know, just so you know, from a statewide perspective, as of uh, yesterday, there were uh, nearly, nearly 9,000 um, confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the state and about 394 uh, deaths. Uh, we've tested over 87,000 people in Washington state, which is a good number, but we really do need to do more tests. And the governor uh, on a call earlier this week said the number one issue uh, limiting their tests right now is uh, cotton swabs, 50 cent cotton swabs. Um, so that is the limiting factor right now. And so we are scouring, literally scouring the globe for cotton swabs now so that we can um, continue to uh, do more tests here in Washington state. Um, since you tuned in last time as well, uh, we did pass in Congress a $2.2 trillion bill called the CARES Act. This is a bill to provide relief to workers, uh, families, uh, small businesses uh, as well. And I wanted to um, go over a few items with you uh, on that because uh, I'm getting a lot of questions on it. Now, in this most recent package, individuals who are making up to $75,000 and married couples who filed jointly making up to $150,000 will receive $1,200 and $2,400 respectively. Individual making up to $75,000, you'll get $1,200 in a direct economic payment. Uh, married couple filed jointly uh, making $150 will get $2,400. So I'll be really uh, clear about that. And families will receive $500 for every child uh, up to up to 16 years old. Now, these payments are, are going to decrease by uh, $5 for every uh, extra $100 someone makes over $75,000 until at $99,000, no one receives uh, a direct economic payment. For instance, as a member of Congress, I assure you, I am not receiving a direct economic payment. Um, so that's how that's gonna work. The payments will start going out as soon as the, uh, as soon as the end of, this week, possibly spilling into early next week when the payments will go out and there'll be direct deposit payments. So your direct deposit information on file with the IRS, your bank information, your check will be sent directly to your, uh, into your bank account and that will start uh, next week. After about three weeks of those deposits are made, the IRS will begin issuing paper checks to individuals who, where the IRS does not have your bank account information. And those checks will be issued in reverse income order. So people with the lowest incomes will get the che their checks first uh, as far as the paper check distribution goes. Now, the IRS is also planning on developing an online portal. So if the IRS does not have your bank account information because you haven't filed taxes, if you're a Social Security recipient and you haven't filed taxes, someone on disability and you didn't make enough to file taxes, you can still get a direct deposit check if you use this online portal from the IRS and put your bank account information uh, using that portal. That portal is not up and running yet. I'm already hearing a word about scams that are already out there. Um, I, want to, I want to urge everyone to be very careful. The IRS.gov web-based portal for direct deposit information is not yet functioning. So do not um, fall for any of these scams. Um, the IRS will get information out about when that web-based portal is up and running. We will be communicating that as well to people. So, um, but in that way, if you're a Social Security recipient who did not file a tax return, you will not have to file extra paperwork now. You can use this web-based portal to put your direct deposit information into that web-based portal and the IRS will directly send a check uh, to your bank account. So there'll be more information on that. The CARES Act also expand who is eligible to receive unemployment benefits. Uh, this will include independent contractors, gig economy workers, um, um, self-employed folks. Uh, 
they will be able to use something called the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. This uh, unemployment assistance will be run through Washington State, but it will be 100% funded by the, by the federal government. The State Employment Security Department, found at esd.wa.gov, uh, will have their system ready to accept applications by April 18th for PUA. So if you've heard that you can apply for unemployment assistance uh, with this new system, even though you weren't eligible otherwise under the state system, my advice, the advice from the Employment Security Department is to wait till April 18th. You can go to esd.wa.gov and sign up for email alerts, which is what the department is recommending that you do, and, and watch those uh, email alerts so you're ready to sign up for PUA, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, on April 18th. So uh, just watch that very closely. Um, they also, the state has urged people to get your material and information together so that you're ready immediately um, to get online and file. The bill includes uh, nearly $350 billion to provide small businesses with loans and grants to help with payroll and rent and utilities. Applications opened last week for small businesses and sole proprietorships to apply uh, for this PPP, this Payment Protection Program. And those folks are applying through their SBA lender. So your local bank, if they are SBA preferred, that's where you want to go to begin the process to apply for the PPP. And starting this Friday, starting in a couple of days, independent contractors and self-employed folks will be able to apply as well through existing lenders. So if you're a small business owner, I encourage you to contact your lender directly um, if you want to participate in the payment uh, in the Paycheck Protection Program. So you can also visit the SBA's website at sba.gov for further information. Uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, I'm also doing some work in the community. I did get to visit um, a business uh, today, Eddie Line Kayaks. It's doing something very uh, helpful for their community. Eddie Line is manufacturing uh, single-use face shields for use by hospitals, uh, clinics, nurses, uh, emergency uh, providers, first responders, police, uh, deputy sheriffs, anyone who's out there in the field on the front line uh, dealing with the issues involved with COVID-19. So Eddie Lyon Kayaks, a kayak maker in Burlington, Washington, is uh, uh, changing what they're doing to help out uh, in, Sk in the Skagit Valley. I was able to go up there. I wore my mask. I stayed six feet away from everybody. The only time I was close to folks is when I had gloves on, had a, my mask on, and a face shield, and I helped, uh, helped build um, or put together a couple of these, uh, a couple of these um, face shields. So. Um, there's a lot of this innovation and creativity going on there's all, all and as well it just shows that people are are uh, working together because we are all in this together now a few questions um, I got I got uh, early on uh, before we did uh, before we went live here on Facebook live so one are you going to address the shortage of personal protective equipment for hospitals and first responders a short answer to that is yes uh, the longer answer is that it, that belongs uh, that responsibility actually belongs to the state so Governor Inslee and his Department of Health are uh, continually working to get personal protective equipment into the state so that it can be distributed under a priority list set by the Department of Health, set by public health professionals, and get that uh, personal protective equipment uh, distributed around the state. And the governor has also uh, sort of invoked his own version of this Defense Production Act, working with manufacturers in the state like Outdoor Research, which is a company that um, makes military clothing by hand, so high quality. They are now doing work to build uh, to uh, make masks uh, for um, first responders, for healthcare workers, and the like. So um, uh, I'm doing my part, uh, but uh, we're also. Um, I think the unfortunate news is that we can't rely on the national strategic stockpile for personal protective equipment right now, and that's unfortunate. Uh, but uh, it's Governor Inslee and his team, along with the Washington State Congressional Delegation. We're all pulling on the same oar on this one, and I, and I hope you'll help us. So what can be done, or is being done, to help people who are self-employed? Well, I did cover that a little bit, but there really, I want you to think about two things. One is, as a self-employed person, you will be eligible to apply through your lender for um, the PPP, the Payment Protection Program. 
So I recommend you talk to your le your your lender, your banker, and if they're SBA preferred, uh, work with them on that. Uh, otherwise, on April 18th, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program starts through esd.wa.gov, and as a self-employed person, uh, you'll be eligible. Uh, given other other conditions, you could be eligible to um, uh, receive unemployment uh, benefits through the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. I should note as well, because of Congress acting, we have the PUA, and we also have an extra $600 a week for people who apply either through state unemployment or through this new federal unemployment. Um, so that $600 would be on top of whatever you're eligible for under PUA. So that's where you can go uh, if you're self-employed. Those are a couple of options. Um, where does the IRS get direct deposit information? Well, the IRS has a lot of direct deposit information today. Uh, about 60% of uh, folks who file income taxes, uh, that information already exists with the IRS. The IRS is, as well as I noted, uh, collecting through a uh, secure web-based portal uh, direct deposit information from folks who do not yet have that information with uh, IRS. And that includes Social Security recipients and Social Security disability insurance recipients. So if you're on disability, if you're on Social Security, if you're on any other kind of program like that, uh, and you don't file taxes, so the IRS doesn't have, doesn't have your bank information, you can use that web-based portal. But be, again, I'll reiterate, be looking at the irs.gov website for when that's gonna go live, and be careful about potential scams uh, on this uh, with this particular program. Be very careful about that. How are we addressing the backlog with unemployment claims? Uh, it's a really good question and a great one for the Employment Security Department. I did a telephone town hall last night with about 7,000 people on it, and one of my guests was Commissioner Susie Levine, the commissioner of the Employment Security Department. Um, what she, she understands there is a huge backlog of claims. Uh, they are doing their dead little best um, in Olympia with her staff and hiring more staff to, um, uh, to lessen the backlog. Uh, and they're doing their best to get their website up and running for the pandemic unemployment assistance by April 18th and to make that process as smooth as possible. No guarantees for me, um, probably no guarantees from the commissioner, but I know she's working hard and her team is working hard to uh, lessen that backlog and be sure that the PUA um, application experience is uh, smooth for you as well. I would expect some hiccups. Um, but you know, bear with us. Um, you can apply starting April 18th for PUA. I should note that benefits are retroactive. So you, the benefit doesn't start on April 18th. It will start um, on your date of unemployment due to COVID-19 uh, after a certain date. And so um, just watch that space. Are you working for a bill to provide continued cash to support Americans? A single check of 1200 for an adult worker is insufficient. And we've heard the amount would be scaled back for those who had low incomes reported to the IRS. So on that last point, um, we've heard that the amount would be scaled back for those who have very low incomes reported to the IRS. Uh, that is not true. Um, the truth is that everybody um, will get a, uh, who makes under $75,000, everybody, you didn't have to file any taxes with the IRS, everybody will get a, um, a $1,200 check. And after the IRS is done with the direct deposit um, uh, folks, they will then issue paper checks uh, to um, uh, uh, folks. And the criteria will be the first checks will go out to the folks who make the least. So um, I think you can be assured of that. Uh, and with regards to providing additional money, um, that is on the list of things to try to get into a CARES 2.0 package but there's no guarantees right now. We're negotiating um, the content of that today right, as we speak, and Congress may be back in session as soon as April 20th uh, to deal with that issue and, and many other issues that are outstanding, including our next steps, more help for healthcare workers, more assistance for our state and local governments who are seeing falling tax revenues, which they use to provide services to all of you, uh, more help for our small businesses, our neighbors who are running their local small businesses, a rest that favorite restaurant, that you want to go to, the fav your favorite bar hangout that you, you might go to. Uh, we want to help those owners of those businesses more than the big, more than the big businesses. Um, there's a lot left to do in this. Uh, I want to uh, 
just uh, affirm for you that I'm working hard, my staff is working hard, and if there's something that we can do um, more that we're not doing, or if we can do more of something we already, already are doing, um, contact my office, let us know what we can do. So thank you very much, that's it, uh, and I appreciate it very much, and we'll see you at the next Facebook Live event. Thanks.